This looks like it could be an AA5 radio, but it is a FM radio only. And here is the back side of it. And you can see the model number is 602C. And I've taken it out of the cabinet. We're going to do some tracing with a scope on this FM radio. Now if you have uh, any radio, AM or FM or both, and it's not playing, this information which I got off of Nostalgia Air for this model radio, is very important, particularly the uh, voltages. I test that first, particularly the plate voltages are very important. That can usually pinpoint a problem area. Now the resistance readings are very important too, but uh, the voltage readings are pretty good to use. And if you suspect that the oscillator is not working, this right here is on this radio the control grid of the oscillator tube and notice that it is a negative 3.8 volts. I would check that voltage to see if the oscillator is oscillating. This is a diagram of the top view of this radio. I'm going to flip this over because we're going to be working on the inside of this radio. And it's a good idea to know what the signal flow is before you start troubleshooting. And from the antenna, the signal will go to the 6BJ6, that's the RF amplifier, over to the 12BA7, which is the uh, amplifier and mixer, and from that point it's going to turn into a 10.7 megahertz signal. That gets sent up to the 12BA6 for amplification, then over to the next 6BJ6, then to the 12S8GT, and this is where it uh, gets detected and amplified, then shipped over to the audio output tube, which is the 35B5, and of course, then to the speaker. Now I know this because I studied uh, the wiring diagram, and this is this is the wiring diagram for this model. Now the front end of the radio can be a difficult place to work in because most everything you use, a scope, signal tracer, uh, voltmeter, uh, usually uh, detunes the circuit or might even uh, ground the signal uh, so you can't hear it. So that's why the voltages and the resistance readings are very important. But let's go through the signal path of this circuit. From the antenna, it does go through the 6BJ6 and then over to the 12BA7 and this mixes the frequency and it comes out the intermediate frequency of 10 dot 7 megahertz, and this gets magnetically coupled to the IF of T1 over to the 12BA6, and the output of that gets magnetically coupled through T2 over to the uh, 6BJ6, and then again through T3 over to the 12S8GT where it gets detected. Now after it gets detected we have our audio signal here and 
and we can see that from the detector it goes down to the other part of the 12S8GT and then over to the 35B5 audio output tube and then to the speaker. Now there's a another path that I want to talk about here. Look at that capacitor all the way up in the upper right hand corner. Notice that it says positive and that's going to ground and negative is on the other side. That is our AVC for this radio. And if we follow that path, now we're talking about a DC signal here, biasing signal. That DC signal goes up through a resistor and the DC passes through the coil, the secondary of T1, and gets impressed upon the control grid of the 12BA6. So the more negative it is, the less that tube amplifies. And likewise, if it is not as negative, well then the 12BA6 will amplify the signal more. So this is the AVC circuit. Here are the test points I'm going to be using. And here is a look at the inside of this radio. And I took some notes and jotted them down on a piece of paper. What pins I wanted to look at in this radio. And if you don't know how the pins count, you can download my free ebook. You'll find the link in, uh, on my channel in the About Me. And this is from the book, and it tells you how to count the pins bottom view. Okay, I'm going to go to the 6BJ6, the first one, pin 5. And let's see, that is right here. Okay, you can't really see anything. That's mainly noise, because the signal's so weak. I'm going to go to pin 9 of the 12BA7. Pretty much the same thing. Now I'm going to go to the 12BA6, pin 5. I'm going to enlarge that. Okay. We can start seeing a signal there because we've got some amplification. And you can see the lines wiggling with the modulation, but the front end of a FM receiver or AM receiver is very difficult because the tools you work with short out the signal. Now I'm going to go to the second B or 6BJ6 pin 5 and I might have to turn this down we'll see oh yeah see the signal has greatly increased not oh, too far Of course, it pretty much shorts out the signal, but you can see the 10.7 wave being modulated. That's the fuzziness and the changing that you're looking at. 
And here is after it has been demodulated. I haven't changed the frequency yet, which I'm going to need to do. Okay. I'll change the setting on the scope. There's our audio before it goes through the resistor to the high side of the volume control. Okay. Okay, believe it or not, you can use a signal tracer, which I'm going to turn on all the way, and I'm going to also put this in RF mode. to the same place as pin 5 of the first 6 BJ6 and to pin 9 of the 12 VA7 don't really hear anything and then pin 5 of the 12 VA6 Just barely hear something. And now, pin 5 of the 6 VJ6, the second one. And now, back to after it is been demodulated. You can hear the signal there. I'm going to change that to AM. Knock off the Buffalo Bills. 13 to 10. Buffalo's dropped two straight. 8 OT on the road. Now, this is on the high side of the volume control. They're in the fourth. Dallas leading against the Clippers, 82-69, nine to play in the fourth quarter. The Heat beat the New Jersey Nets, 101-78 behind 20th from LeBron James. NASCAR Spring Cup, Cliff Boyer takes the checkered flag at Talladega, but Jimmy Johnson maintaining his points lead with three races left to go. He's 10 up on Denny Hamlin. BCS countdown tonight, 815. Okay, if your radio's not playing, Obviously, the voltages are very important, the plate voltages, but another very important one is the grid, control grid of the oscillator. And I looked up in the specs, and it's supposed to be about 3.8 negative, and I do have the meter set up to negative voltage, and this is set up to... Let's see, 5 volts full scale. So I'm going to touch the control grid of the oscillator. And this reads about 3.6, which is pretty good. Tells me that the oscillator is oscillating.